This is a 650 to 700 level problem solving question in GMAT. What we need to find out is the number of numbers lying within one standard deviation. Quickly read the question. Consider this following set. It's got these numbers 50, 40, 10, 20, 60, 30, 70, 90, 80. We'll count the number of elements to start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this data set has got 9 observations. What we need to find out is how many of these observations lie within one standard deviation of the mean. Let's say the mean is an M, the standard deviation is a D. So mean minus deviation to mean plus deviation, we need to find out how many terms are there. What is the approach? The first thing, let's find out the mean. Subsequently, compute the standard deviation as after having found out the mean. And then let's find out what is the value of mean minus deviation, what is the value of mean plus deviation, and count the observations that lie within it. Finding the mean is actually a part of finding out the standard deviation. So it's a two-step process for us. Find the standard deviation and then count the observations that lie between mean minus deviation and mean plus deviation. Start with the first process. The mean is nothing but the sum of all of these numbers divided by the number of numbers. Sum of all of these numbers is 450 divided by 9 equals 50. One little thing, keep this in mind. I said always be switched on when it comes to, when you take a look at the set of observations, can you observe something from them? Many a times, just writing the numbers down in an ascending order will help us figure out some pattern within the numbers. If you wrote those numbers in an ascending order, this is what those nine numbers are. You'll quickly realize that these numbers are in an arithmetic progression with a common difference of 10. The middle number 50 is going to be the arithmetic mean and this also helps us in computing the subsequent steps, deviation and square of the deviations much quickly than writing them down in the order in which it was presented. So either way, whether you found out by adding and dividing it by 9 or spotted this, the mean is 50. So step 1 is done. So in finding out this mean minus deviation, we have found out mean. Now let's go ahead and find out the deviation. Steps 2 and 3 for us are finding out the deviation and the square of the deviation. Start with this. I'm going to write these nine numbers up here in an ascending order. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. The deviations therefore will be mean as a 50. 10 minus 50 minus 40 is the deviation for this number. 20 minus 50 is a minus 30. 30 minus 50 is a minus 20. 40 minus 50 is a minus 10. 50 minus 50 is a zero. 60 minus 50 is a 10, 70 minus 50 is a 20, 80 minus 50 is a 30, 90 minus 50 is a 40. Next step, let's square these deviations. Minus 40 square is a 1600, minus 30 square is a 900, minus 20 square is a 400, minus 10 square is a 100. 0 square is 0, square of 10 is 100, square of 20 is 400, square of 30 is 900, and square of 40 is 1600. Next step, step 4, is computing the variance, which is the average of the squared deviation. So let's compute the sum first. 1600 plus 900 is 2500 plus 500, 3000. The pattern is repeated here. 3000 plus 3000, 6000 is the sum of the squared deviations divided by 9 elements. So this is equal to 2000 by 3, which is nothing but 666.66. The last step is computing the standard deviation. Looks a little daunting. We'll have to compute the square root of 666.66. GMAT is never going to test whether you can get the answer to two decimal point. Approximate it. 25 square is equal to 625. 26 square equals 676. Many a times knowing squares up to 30 or up to 50 numbers comes in handy in these questions. This number 666 is closer to 676. So we know the actual answer lies between 25 and 26. I'm going to jolly well approximate it to a 26 and work with this. Whether you went with a 25 or a 26, you would realize at the end of this so discussing this question, it's going to make no difference and take this for granted. You'll never have to compute the standard deviation to two decimal point accuracy. They're never going to ask you to do that. Let's move on from here. Let's quickly summarize computing the standard deviation in a printed form. Compute the deviations as minus 40 all the way up to plus 40. These are the measures of the square of the deviation. This is the variance, which is adding up all the square deviations, dividing it by 9, which works out to 666.66. Standard deviation is the square root of this number, which approximately works out to 26. Step 2, having computed the standard deviation, let's count the elements that lie within one standard deviation. What is the mean? Mean is the 50. Mean minus deviation, we know the deviation is 26, so it is 50 minus 26. Mean plus deviation is a 50 plus 26. 
This number works out to a 24. This works out to a 76. So we need to find out of these nine observations mentioned here, how many of them lie between 24 and 76? 50 is between 24 and 76. 40 is also. 10 is not. 20 is not. 60 is. 30 is. 70 is. 90 and 80 are not. So how many observations lie within one standard deviation? Five of these observations lie within one standard deviation. Quickly summarize this last bit in a printed form. We know the deviation is 26, the mean is 50. So mean minus deviation is a 24, mean plus deviation is a 76. Observations that lie between 24 and 76 are these five numbers. So the answer is five observations. Check out the related videos and remember to subscribe to the channel. What's more, let's make scoring Q51 GMAT a reality. Sign up for the most comprehensive and affordable online GMAT quant course at gmat.vizaco.com. That's again gmat.vizaco.com.